Okay, now that you've gotten Report Builder installed, or Power BI Report Builder installed, you need to find a way to get started with it. I'm going to skip these first three folders uh, for now, because the first thing we need to do is go get some data to put into our report. And the way that Power BI Report Builder works is very different from the way Power BI Desktop works. In Power BI Report Builder, there is no concept of a model. What you have is a concept of creating a connection and then bringing back a table of results. That's it. So you have a lot of flat tables you would have in your Power BI Report Builder report that you can connect in a few different ways that I'll talk to you about, but there is no concept of going and creating a model like you would in Power BI Desktop. This is why creating a model and a report in Power BI Desktop first may make sense to do prior to actually going and building against that with Power BI Report Builder if you're not familiar with it, because then you'll have been able to do all of the modeling of your data and you can bring back flat results that specifically that make sense to potentially go into more details around your report. Because if you want to go and create a uh, detail or pixel perfect report that you want to say drill through from one to the other, this is a great way to get started and kind of do that. So in the concept of a data source, for this particular series, what we really want to connect to is a Power BI data set. And yes, I know that is confusing, but just bear with me here because uh, Report Builder has had the concept of a data source for quite some time and the concept of a data set for quite some time, but it is a little bit different from the way Power BI does it. So my data source is nothing more than my connection. It is simply a query string, or in this case, a connection to my Power BI data set, and then I will create a number of different tables on top of that that I want to potentially surface on my report from that particular connection. Now, this does provide me with some flexibility that I don't have in Power BI because, as you may have heard in some videos from Patrick LeBlanc or from some of the documentation, you can go and create multiple connections to different Power BI data sets, which you can't do today in Power BI Desktop. So, for this particular example, what I want to do is right-click on my data sources and create a connection to my Power BI data set. If I do that, what it'll do is it'll bring up a selection window if I've already been signed into the service. If I haven't, it'll prompt me to go through the sign-in prompts just like you would in, say, Power BI Desktop. But what I see here is I have a my own tenant, and then I want to connect to a data set to start building my paginated report, and I have two options in my workspace. And one of the nice things about this is I can see exactly what the data set underneath is. Uh, if it's an import, if I'm doing a direct query back to a particular data source, like say a SQL Server database, or if I'm connected live to an analysis services connection. If I want to go and use my eBay data set, I will use that for my data source and just hit select. And so now what I'll see under my data sources is a little server icon or a database icon. And then it shows the name of the workspace that I'm connected to and the data set in that workspace. But as I mentioned, if I wanted to, I could go and create a Power BI data set connection to say the SU blog demo from February. And sure enough, that will also show listed under my data sources. So I can do as many of those as I like in practice, most people don't ever do more than two or three. Uh, but again, there is no there is no hard limitation there. But from a practical perspective, it doesn't make sense to necessarily be creating several of those because again, there is no modeling or trying to connect that data or reshape it in the context of Power BI Report Builder. So since I don't need this one, I'm just going to right click on it and delete it for now. Okay. So that's how I go and create my data source in the context of Power BI Report Builder. Now. What I want to do is go and create a data set against that. So once I've got my connection here, and again, I don't have any data yet in my particular report, I want to right click on my data set and say, okay, I want to add one. So now I'm going to get this screen, which is my data set properties. And this is where a lot of folks end up getting tripped up when they first get started here, because again, I'm not pulling any data into Power BI Report Builder. I'm really just creating a query that'll bring back a table of results against the data source that I've chosen previously. So for this particular example, you see here I've got the ability to rename it. So I'm going to say eBay country data. And then I'm going to choose my data source. Now, if you haven't already created one, you can click new right now. But what I want to do is I want to choose the my workspace eBay data source. Now, for a lot of folks, at this point, what they say is, oh, I'd love to be able to go and just take my DAX query and paste it right in here 
because I know what I want to return my data. Uh, in Power BI Desktop, for example, they introduced the uh, ability to kind of profile a performance analyzer. And one of the cool things from that was you could actually get the DAX query of different elements on the page. You could then take that DAX query, copy it to a different program, and reuse it if you needed to do so. A lot of folks have asked specifically, well, I really want to reuse it in the context of Power BI Report Builder, because again, I already know what my DAX query is, and I will say up front that, that Power BI Desktop will generate better DAX queries in general than what you would go through if you're using the query design tool here. But what is a little confusing is, well, my screen is grayed out right now. I can't actually go and just paste information in here. See, I try to type and that and there's nothing that actually goes in there. So what I need to do is I need to go to the query designer, even if I have my query text already, and then I can paste it in there, or I can use the GUI to go and do that. So if I click on my query designer button, I'll say loading query designer. And what happens here and why there's a bit of a delay is what's actually happening is it's going and reconnecting back out to the data set, uh, the Power BI data set in the service. So it doesn't keep that connection open any longer than it has to. That's just for performance reasons. And here I'm in the, the graphical view of this. If I wanted to just paste in my query text right now, I simply click the design mode and it changes to graphic. And I can just go and type stuff there accordingly. So that's how you go and do that if you choose to do so in the context of using your uh, query from desktop and paste it there. But it's something to keep in mind as you start using the tool that you do have to take that additional step. One of the things we're looking at on the product side is how we can simplify that process and perhaps let you get it in sooner. But if I switch back, you'll say, hey, just be careful. You don't want to lose anything. And I'm back in my query design mode using the graphic interface. So one of the things to keep in mind here is you'll see all of the tables that are a part of your model and you'll see the measures and KPIs. What this doesn't pick up is any implicit measures you've created in Power BI Desktop. What do I mean by an implicit measure? If I just uh, take a number field from my, uh, one of my tables and drag it onto the canvas in Power BI Desktop, it'll figure out that it's a number and it'll automatically sum it, or I can do things like average and stuff like that. You can't do that here. You have to actually go and have specified that in the context of your, your Power BI Desktop uh, data set. And this is a similar thing that happens when you try to use Analyze in Excel. If you try to use Analyze in Excel, what happens is if you haven't created an explicit measure and said, OK, I want to go and create the sum of this particular column, you won't be able to use that here. And oftentimes that trips folks up because they can't create the return, the query that they need to to be successful. So here I've got my eBay uh, table of information. So you see here I've got city, item, things like that. And then under the measures under eBay, you'll see I also have their sales, distinct items. So I went through and I had actually created ex the explicit measures here for this. So a very simple uh, way to get started with this, if I just want to go to country and drag it over and sales, I can then execute the query you'll see it brings back my results. Now I can bring additional items here. Uh, so let's say I want to add city to my query. I can do that, re-execute it. And you'll see again, it'll show me the different cities inside of the country of where the items were purchased. And then the total sales there it breaks it out even further. Now, if I wanted to go and filter this data down, I could do that up here. I could choose a dimension, say, okay, eBay, hierarchy, I want to grab the country, and I want to say it's equal only to uh, the United States. So there I say OK, and then I rerun it. And then sure enough, I only get back results that match the United States. The concept of a parameter in a report builder is important because paginated reports allow end users to go and choose parameters, if you as the author would like, at runtime of the report. So if I wanted people to be able to go and set the value here for country before they view the report, I would instead make this a parameter value and then I choose which items they would be allowed to select as part of that. We'll go into parameters in a lot more detail in a later session, but that's what I can do here. So I don't really want this, so I'm going to get rid of my filter, rerun the query to make sure my results are fine, and then there you see I have back the data that I needed for my report. So if I click OK, what will happen here 
is in a moment you'll see the actual text, the DAX, that's been generated here for this particular item. And so you there, evaluate, summarize columns, eBay countries, eBay city sales. And once that's done, I can click OK. And I have my very first data set in the context of Power BI Report Builder.